Okay, we have covered bivariate analysis for numeric to numeric, bivariate analysis for categorical to numeric. Let's take a look and see how we can evaluate categorical to categorical. Now, in the case of our insurance data, we don't have a categorical label. So we'll just kind of illustrate the concept by putting together a cross tab between two of our categorical features. So let's take a look at uh, smoker and region and see if maybe uh, there's something going on there that would be uh, worth checking into. So we'll uh, do a smoker region cross tab. So cross tab is uh, the visualization technique we use for categorical by categorical. So you'll see when we bring in our region as columns and smoker as rows, we just get a table here. And so to fill in the values of the table, I will just bring in charges and just drop it in this table here. So you see, I get a sum of the charges. That's not what I'm really interested in here. I'm looking to see what the count is. So I wanna see how many instances show up in each bucket there, each combination of region and smoker. So I'll change this to count. And there I've got, uh, let me spread this out a little bit so we can see all of the uh, regions. All right, so there we've got our cross tab and we can see the counts by region and by whether the uh, instance belongs to a customer that's a smoker or not. All right, so you can do some shading on this and uh, continue, but that's the basic visualization for a cross tab. And then uh, I would likely go ahead and continue with this to uh, work on the size of the font, make it a little bit bigger. All right, so that out of the way. So how do we determine if a cross tab is statistically significant? In other words, how can we tell whether this distribution of counts is different than what we might expect if there was no kind of effect on these two variables, uh, one on the other? All right, so let's take a look at the example that you see in the uh, reading module. And I've gone ahead and we're going to do this in Excel. So in Excel, I have loaded up that table of white collar jobs, blue collar jobs, you have no collar jobs, basically the type of job someone has and the neighborhood they live in. So you can see we have 650 examples and we have 150 in neighborhood A, 150 in neighborhood B, 200 in neighborhood C, and another 150 in neighborhood D. And then total of 349 white collar jobs, 151 blue collar jobs, 150 no collar jobs. And this is the actual neighborhoods that each of these types of job holders currently lives in. So that's step one in working our way into uh, a chi-squared analysis. So basically we're gonna use a chi-squared analysis to determine uh, if this is what we would expect to see. So what we would do next is now we're going to calculate our expected values. So what would we expect? Well, we have 150 people that live in neighborhood A out of 650. We have 349 people that have white collar jobs out of 650. So for neighborhood A, and I'll just copy the uh, job names down. So I would expect to have in this cell, I'll start my formula with an equal sign, 150 divided by 650 times 349 divided by 650. So I'm take, basically taking the ratio of people that live in neighborhood A over the entire population and the ratio of people who have a white collar job over the entire population. 
And then I'm going to take the result of all that and multiply it by my population. And so I would expect 80.5385 people. Of course, half a person can't live in a neighborhood. So 81 people-ish, 81-ish people to live in the neighborhood. All right. So now what I'd like to do is populate this for all the rest of the cells. But I don't want to have to do that formula every time. So I'm going to take uh, advantage of absolute references and relative references and use a combination of those. So B5, I know I always want to use B5 in this column here. So I'm going to lock in the row, but not the column. So I'm going to hit F4. All right. So now I'm done with that one. So F5, I always want to use, well, I want to lock that in completely. So just a plain old F5. So for F2, let's see, I want to lock in the column. Okay, so dollar $F. And then the F5 again, I'll lock in on both. So you can see I've got dollar B dollar row, and then absolute F5, dollar F, dollar column two, and then lock in F5 and F5. All right, so let's see if this works. All right, so I've got a bunch of numbers. Um, okay, 150, 150. So that seems to have worked okay uh, because I'm getting the exact same numbers across the board for A and B. Uh, 200, so a bigger number across the board here. 150 back to that same number. All right, so we might be in good shape. So I'm just going to copy down my formulas here to see if my totals work. All right, so I've got 650, 650. All right, so that's awesome. I've got the expected count I was looking for. All right, so now we've got our actual table. We've got our expected counts table. And we can see there are definitely differences in those numbers. So from here, we can actually calculate a chi-squared score. So I will uh, copy my titles down again and we'll calculate chi-square score. All right, so now I'm going to come up with a, uh, a component of that score for each of these cells. And that component is what is my actual value, so equals my 90 minus the expected value. And then I'm going to square that result. To, oops, that's uh, equals minus that. Uh, and then I'm going to square that result. So I'm going to get into my formula here. Go in here and put some parentheses around that and raise that to the power of 2. And then I'm going to go back and put parentheses around all that. All right, so I've got that squared value of the difference. And then I'm going to divide that by the expected count. So I get 1.11 uh, and so on. So now I'm going to copy this formula all the way around. And I'll add up my results. and I get a chi-squared of 24.57. All right, so is that a good score? Well, it, uh, it's a reasonably big number, so that tells me that we probably have something going on, but 
we have to um, determine how many degrees of freedom we have in order to determine uh, what the p-value is for that. So let's see if we can figure out how many degrees of freedom we have. All right, the DOF. So in a distribution like this, we would take a look at how many rows we have. So rows, and we have three rows, columns. We've got four columns, and we're going to subtract one from each. So that uh, is how we'll calculate degrees of freedom. So that minus one, or minus that, two times three, and then we will multiply those together equals two times three, and that's our degrees of freedom. Okay. So we have six degrees of freedom. We've got a chi-squared score of 24.5712. So that means we're ready to calculate our p-value. So our chi-square p-value. And we do that with the formula chi square distribution right tailed probability. So this is the one we're going to use. The first one, first value it needs is x, which is our chi-squared score. So I'll go down and grab that. And then the second parameter it needs is how many degrees of freedom do we have? We have six. So that gives me 0 0.00041. Yeah, we have some uh, stick statistical significance here. Now, if we want to cut straight to the chase and work past all of these steps here, um, now this is a great visualization because it gives us a good feel for what we expect versus what we have. And then we can see also, based on the magnitude of the various values in these um, chi-square score tables, you can actually see which combinations have a bigger effect than other combinations. So here we have 6.59, looks like our biggest number. So blue collar jobs uh, living in neighborhood B seems to be, you know, there, there is something about neighborhood B that attracts blue collar job uh, workers and also white collar job workers a lot more than no collar job workers. All right. So anyway, just uh, food for thought there. But we do have a shortcut that allows us to calculate the chi-square p-value directly, and that is the chi-square test. Now, in order to run the chi-square test, we still have to calculate the expected values. So we still have to perform one of these steps here. So this table here, uh, we can skip that step and go straight to the chi-square test. So equals chi-square test. And then it asks me, well, where is your range of actuals? So here are my actuals. And then uh, comma. Then it wants to know where the expected values are. So see, we need to calculate the expected values before we can run this test. And then we press enter, and we get the same chi-squared score. So now you've got a way to visualize and evaluate different combinations of attributes, no matter which data type they are. All right, so that's uh, it for this video, and we'll let you get back to it.